They call it the Acer Swift X, and here are the benchmarks that are going to be coming up in just a few minutes. Now, let's talk about this laptop. It has an RTX 3050 Ti, Ryzen 7 5800U, 16 gigs of RAM, and anywhere from a 512 to a one terabyte SSD. Now, I like what they're offering here. They're offering dedicated graphics, a mobile processor to run cool and quiet, in a small package. Now this is a 14 inch laptop. As you can see, coming up on the screen, it's a thin and light package. Now, right off the bat though, I've spent about three weeks with this laptop. And one thing I'm not fond of is it, it just feels a little, a little on the too light side. And I don't mean light by weight. I mean light by build materials. Um, it just doesn't feel as solid as I would want it to. When I pick it up, I'm not just like, yeah, good grip, solid package. Compared to something like the Legion 7 Slim, when I pick this up, it is yes, it is a bit heavier, but it doesn't have that uh, press on the top cover like this does. When you press the top cover of this laptop, it just feels like it gives a little more. With the Legion 7, it, it just it feels a little more solid. I, I know like it's kind of hard to explain with words, but you know that feeling you get when you pick up a laptop, you're like, it just, it doesn't feel as solid as, as I would want it to. That's the feeling I get with the Acer Swift X. And I'm just telling you that right off the bat because the performance in this laptop is truly fantastic for the package. And this is a big move, okay? I, I, I wanna take a moment to do put honor where honor is due. We've not seen a laptop with a mobile processor and a dedicated GPU really since before this year. I mean, we're now seeing more laptops with mobile processors and dedicated GPUs, but this is a big moment because they're looking at creative professionals saying, okay, they don't need necessarily all this gaming performance with these hot H series processors, but they do need a dedicated GPU to support the graphics that they're working on. And that's what we're seeing with this package. We're seeing an alternative to the big chunky gaming laptops. Okay, all that out of the way. Let's cover some of the things that I didn't talk about in my unboxing. So if you're curious of my initial build quality thoughts and first impressions of this laptop, I'll link that up at the end of this video. But first and foremost, let's talk about the color gamut range. This laptop has good color gamut range, especially better than the Acer Swift 3, which does not have good color gamut range. For the webcam, here's a quick sample of me using the webcam. Here is a sample of the webcam on the Acer Swift X, a little audio and video feed for you. Regarding the speakers, that's another area that they saved a little bit of money on, and I've done a quick audio sample so you can check that out. Now, one thing I love about this laptop is the build materials. We have an aluminum keyboard deck, top cover, side panels, and bottom cover. And you can see good ventilation. We have a vent here, and we have a vent along the top of the keyboard deck. So we're just gonna suck air in, cool it, and then push the air out. And I'm seeing really good cooling results with this laptop. And we'll get into that deeper once we get into the performance results. Now, as far as the lifting up of the chassis is concerned to get more ventilation under the laptop, you can see it does that very well. And it does it early enough to where it's not awkward. So it lifts it right there. And usually that's right about where I'm gonna use my screen. And that's the optimal height to get the laptop off of the desk and then allow air to flow underneath it. Regarding the ports, we can check those out real quick. As you can see, we have an HDMI USB type C power port, uh, USB type A. And on the other side, we have our headphone jack USB type A and a Kensington lock. So it's got a good selection of ports, um, though for me personally as a creator, I wish it had the SD card slot, but still it's gonna do what you need and you can grab a dongle for your importing of your footage. The battery life is good, but it could be better. Okay, and let's think about this. Lenovo has Lenovo Vantage. Asus has the Armory Crate. HP Omen has their I guess HP Omen Command Center. And then Acer did not provide us any sort of fan control thermaline limitations, battery optimizations. The only thing it provides is the little like Windows battery optimizer, which we all know is not something that's amazing. It just is kind of there standard with every laptop. So if Acer set up their own little command center, and maybe they do have one, I just need to download it, but it does not come standard with the laptop, which hindered the ability to get great battery life results because this thing should easily be getting 
10 to 12 hours of battery life if we switch to the integrated graphics in order to save power for our on-the-go workflow. So that is one area that I would be aware of is that you're not gonna get as great of battery life as some of the other on-the-go laptops. And I've done a full video about my top five favorite on-the-go video editing laptops, and this is one of them, and I'll link that up at the end of this video. Now keep in mind, this does have fast charging, so you can charge the battery up to about 50% in around 30 minutes. So that is a good bonus. So the battery doesn't last super long because of the non-customization in a control center, but you can get it back up to charge around 50% very quickly. All right, without further ado, let's jump into the performance results. But if you're curious about the exact pricing and availability, you can head down in the description below and click that link. Now, if you do use that link to make a purchase, I will get a small commission, but at no extra cost to you. And of course, that's what keeps this channel alive and the helpful content coming your way. First and foremost, let's get into Cinebench R20, R23, Geekbench Single Core, and Multi-Core. What we're seeing through the simulated benchmarks and you're gonna see throughout the rest of the video with the performance is it's gonna fall in this kind of happy medium, okay? You're not a mobile laptop anymore because you have a dedicated GPU, but you're not a super high performing gaming laptop because you don't have the H series processor with a larger 3060 or 3070 GPU from Nvidia, the RTX series. And so you have this fantastic mid range for this laptop. It's somebody who's wanting to get into 4K, somebody who's wanting to get into some After Effects or even some light 3D modeling, and they don't wanna drop a ton of money. They wanna be at that $1,000 price point. This is a great, great option. All right, let's jump into the real world test and look at 3D modeling. And as you can tell, it is a little bit lower on the charts because of the 3050 Ti. This is a four gig VRAM card where something like the 3060 inside of the Asus Zephyrus G14 is a six gig VRAM card. So you're gonna see a good bit more performance out of that two gigs of VRAM. Regarding the After Effects standard benchmark though, it really steps it up and hits good mid-range results. As we move into the render benchmark, however, we get a slightly lower score because of the four gig VRAM card. And I'm telling you this just so you can see the gamut of results. What I wanna do is just make sure we have this laptop in context. It is a fantastic laptop at the price point, but I don't want you to think that you're gonna jump into this laptop and be like the 6K video editing maestro because all of a sudden it has a dedicated GPU. It is awesome for what it offers, but we have to keep it in perspective so we know what we're getting. So you're gonna be excited about the results that you get when you pick up this laptop, if you so choose to do so. Now, moving into video editing, here are the export times coming up on the screen now. It, it did great in Premiere Pro from 1080p to 4K. Um, I really like the results that I saw out of this laptop. And regarding playback in Premiere Pro, it did fantastic. No drop frames in 1080p, of course, 45 drop frames in 4K and then about 6,000 drop frames in 6K B-RAW. So this little thing packs a punch. Thermals, like I mentioned earlier, this laptop, is one of its biggest compliments I can give it is it has fantastic thermals, especially for the playback and export times that we saw. It did not get above 70 degrees Celsius on battery and on charger. I was so excited because to me, this proved the value of the U-Series mobile processor in this laptop. It showed up, it stayed cool, it stayed quiet, and it gave us great performance. So as far as what this laptop promised and what it delivered, one and the same. Now checking out the Photoshop results, I couldn't be happier with this laptop. Just barely below an 800, fantastic for an on-the-go laptop. As you can see, it beats out the Acer Swift 3 from last year. So as far as the Adobe Design Suite, Figma, Sketch, great results out of this laptop for photo editors, artists, and designers. Punch for punch, this laptop delivers what it promises. Great performance, cool thermals, quiet fan, good battery life, a great color accurate screen, an aluminum chassis. Now I do wish the keyboard was a little brighter, but you know, I can't have it all. And I do wish we had a little more control over the fan and uh, thermal regulations. But overall, man, a great on the go laptop. Links if you're ready to make a purchase, likes if this video has brought you some value, and subs if you don't miss out on the future uploads. I'll see you here in the next one.